Decisions, decisions. What am I going to build next? Ah, that's a good idea. A hedge trimmer. Yes, I'm going to be building my own kit helicopter and there are a lot to choose from. I'm particularly keen on one called a Rotaway Exec, so I'm going off to Arizona to have a look around the factory and take a test flight. Now, it's left-hand drive over there, isn't it? So I'll um, swap cars mid-Atlantic. OK, well, we're going to take a little quick walk through, through the factory. And it's massive. I was expecting this little almost kind of shed. No, we've got uh, actually several different big rooms like this. Here they're assembling the rotor system and then the engines for you. As you can see, uh, all the critical parts of the helicopter you're getting. And everything else is machined by you, is it here? Yes, we do. That's all done here back in the machine shop. Uh, over here is actually where we start to assemble the boxes and all your smaller parts. This is. In the process of being shipped, it's uh, an airframe, obviously. Uh, over here are where we're putting all the smaller parts. We sort of pioneered this process where we're taking all of the small parts and we're organizing it for you. So when you're putting this together, you're going to first start and take and line up all these cards against the wall <laughs> and don't touch anything till your construction material tells you what to do with each of these parts. It's almost idiot proof. Which is a very good job well, when I'm building anything. We try not to say that, but that's what we're <laughs> aiming for, yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, welding. Now we get into another fun area, and that's the welding shop. Um, over here are all the raw pieces of steel that we're starting with. Right. They're 4130 chromoly steel, and these various parts of steel are what are going to comprise your airframe. And that's what they're in the process of welding an airframe here. This is called a jig, and they actually build and construct from all these steel tubes the actual frame on here, and it can take up to 20 hours to do one frame. You look after them, he's got a better seat than I've got in my office. Yeah, well, they need to be comfortable. Like I said, it does take several hours. Then, over here, we get to the machine shop. This is just a little illustration of some of the fine machinery that we're doing on a lot of the smaller parts. This is your main shaft here. Uh, all of these metal parts are coming to us as raw material. That is a work of art. Yeah, it, it, it looks quite different than the original form in which all of this material that, comes. That is beautiful. This is what's called a CNC machine. Right. What this does is manufacture all of the parts uh, with a consistency, it's all in the computer, every part has all the specifications, it's got all the tools set up. This is seriously high-tech stuff, isn't it? Yeah, uh, you tell the computer what part it is that you're making, and then it knows which tools to get, what specifications and parameters, and what to do to each of the parts that come in there. Wow. It makes your little DIY home multi-purpose kit look a bit pathetic. Yeah, it, and that computer is making this machine choose and change the tool now to the next part of the process and the production of the part. Once you get it all set up and, and ready to go on a particular part, you just stand back and let it do its thing. Excellent. Next step. Yes, let's go fly. Let's go fly now. You're talking my language. Okay. <laughs> How difficult 
angle is this to flying? So obviously it's a very lightweight helicopter. It's probably the same category as the R-22 or a small slides or any of the small lightweight helicopters are more like a little sports car versus your bigger helicopters like your jet rangers and kind of like your Cadillacs. And to think you can build one of these in your own garage. has now changed hands and all these boxes are mine. It is apparently part number E10-2000. The first thing each builder should do upon receipt of their exact 162F is to conduct a complete physical inventory of all the parts shipped, just to make sure they haven't left anything on the boat. There's something I recognise. Radiator cap. Wipes. Engine crate. I know what you lot are like. You're desperate for me to tell you exactly how many parts there are to this kit helicopter. Well, suffice to say, on the paperwork so far, I have identified 1,300 individual types of component. So, my guess is it's probably something like about 10,000 bits but I ain't counting them. This is probably the best kit that I've ever worked on in terms of information. You get two huge builder's manuals, volume one and volume two, that will take you through section by section what you need to do. First job for me is the airframe and landing gear. That's all section two. They also provide you with great diagrams and plans. This is actually quite a simple job, which is good because it kind of builds your confidence. And all the kits over here. Right. The basic assembly for this are two skids, which are these bits down here, two landing gears. This one is the front one, which is split in the middle, and this one is the rear landing gear. So my first measurement, 15 and 3 quarters inches from the end, and we can start assembling. I've got my little sleigh sorted out is to level it up so it's perfectly level in all directions and that's really critical so I've just got simple straight edge bit of wood that's absolutely perfect and right behind the landing gear shoe there my favorite bit of kit the inclinometer is on and rather than going by the bubble this is a precise science building a chopper now that means this side is, that's got to come up like that. So, I need some bits of wood. In the airframe a number of bushings which have had their initial holes drilled out because they were tubing when they were welded in here but they need to be enlarged so a little bit of drilling to be done 
This is very, very hard 